Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. In this video, we're going to learn about the multiplicity of a signal in an NMR chart. Now, another way to say that is it's a signal splitting. So, sometimes the signals that you read on a chart are not just a straight line up and down, but they're actually broken up into several sublines. So, it's one reading, one signal, but it's broken up into several um, spikes. So, it splits. And we're going to learn about why that happens and how that happens and how we would figure out the different patterns related to this. Okay, so let's get started by doing the first thing, and that's just a general idea. Now, the general idea of this, like I said, is let, let, let's actually use an example. So let's say I have uh, something here, Z, and this has two H's. We don't care what Z is, and this has three H's. Well, it turns out that if I was to label this, we would know for sure that we would have two different readings, right? These H's here would represent one reading. We'll call that HA, right? So these are all HA. They have, uh, they're on a, a single bond carbon that has full rotation. But then we also have HB. These are different, right? Because methyl and methylene are not the same, right? So we know that they're different readings. But of course, there's rotation, so those two are the same, the HBs. Now, on a chart, if we assume, let's say, Z is uh, something that's more electronegative, like, um, for, well, actually, let's be more specific. So let's say this is a BR. So then I know for a fact that when I look at my chart, that the A's are going to be further to the right and B's are going to be further to the left. Now, again, we're not looking at specific numbers. We're just looking at relative positions. It turns out that the way this idea works is that when you get like let's say you're turning up the frequency and so remember as you go to the left you're increasing in energy so beca because we're varying the frequency so as you turn from zero up the first one that's going to resonate is a right they're going to require less energy so it'll be the first if you're going from zero upward in frequency when they go through their resonation what happens is when they do that ring uh, spin flip when they do a spin flip what happens is that the neighbors that are not flipping at that moment are going to interfere with the signal. So remember how when A goes up to the beta state and then it drops down to alpha, it sends out a message. That is a sound, right? It's a radial frequency. So when the HA goes up to beta and then it drops back down, when it decays, when it goes back down, it's going to send out a message. Now, that message that's being sent out to the wire is going to be interfered with neighbors that are around it because the neighbors have magnetic fields and what's going to happen is it's going to break the message up so there's going to be a split in our message it turns out that so imagine like for example if I have let's say a sound like beep and now if A goes and absorbs that sound beep and the, the energy comes in A goes to beta when it drops down it sends back out a sound let's say beep right but that sound will be broken up because of the neighbors around it. So instead of saying going back out as a beep, it'll go beep, 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 like that. And so you'll have a break in the message. And that's actually recorded. So what we see is that actually A is going to not come out as just a regular spike. It's not going to look like that. Because it has neighbors, it looks like this. And we'll talk more about how we get to that in a moment. That's what A would look like. And B would look like this. So B would be looking, that's the reading on B. Now notice that when you do this split, this is called a chemical split or, or the multiplicity of the reading, right? So this is multiplicity of the chemical shift. What we find is that there's a clear pattern to how this happens, both in the intensity, the height, as well as the number of times it splits. But I want to point out that the base, that the root of this right here, this base is one. There's one reading. So it's, it's not separate reading. So that's not the same as having it drop up all the way down then go back up and down again. That's not the same. The base is the same. It's just that the signal is broken up above. So notice how here the base is one connection between left and right side, and then it's just split in the middle, right? So that's what we're seeing for B. So again, if I had something like this, and then, like that, that's not necessarily a split. That's two separate signals that we're looking at. You see it? Okay. Now, the question is, how does this happen? 
And like I said, if you think about it from the harmonics point of view or the sound point of view, if you have a radio frequency coming in and it absorbs and it goes to beta, when it goes back down to alpha, it pushes out a sound or a radio frequency. And that radio frequency, as it passes through to get to that wire to go to your computer, it's going to be broken up. But it only breaks up by neighbors. And here's the two key points. First off, the neighbor must, the neighbor H, that is, neighbor H must be different than the H that is creating the chemical shift. And the reason why is because the only time that there's a split is if the neighbors are not resonating. So imagine, for example, if I have, let's say, ethane. Well, we know from all the previous stuff that we've done that this right here has only one reading on a chart. These are all the same, right? This has one chemical shift. So if this is HA and this is HA and that's HA because they're on the same carbon and it's rotation, well, this is also A, A, and A because there's a plane of symmetry in the middle. So what we learned was that this right here gives only one reading. So when you put in the right radio frequency, they all resonate at the same time. So there is no neighbor that's resting. There's no neighbor in the alpha state. They're all going to resonate, which means that you get only one signal. One, you're going to get no splitting of that signal, okay? Because they're all going to resonate at the same time. Now, unlike the top example, when A goes through its resonance, B is not. B is resting, right? Because you have to raise the dial more to get B to go. So they don't go through their spin flip at the same time. So they will interfere with each other's message. So that's the first point that you have to recognize, that the only time you get splitting is if the neighbor H's are not the same as the one that's actually being uh, going through its spin flip. Otherwise, they all do it at the same time. So let me write that out in a, in a different way. Only resting neighbor H's can split the signal. Okay? So if they're resting, then they can split. This brings us to the next point. The next point is what is rest? Well, what's neighbor mean? Okay, so what is the neighbor? So let's do that on the next page. Now, neighbor equals three bonds or less away H to H. Okay, so for example, if I have an H here and an H here, they are what we say coupled. They are communicate. They can interfere with each other's message because these two are one, two, three bonds away. So they will interfere. So for example, if I put another H here and then the BR and then three H's here, well, they will be able to interact because they're all three bonds away. All the H's from neighbor to neighbor is three away. If it's more than three away, that's called a long range splitting. It doesn't happen. Not under standard conditions. So we only worry about when they're three bonds or less away. Okay? Now, they can't be the same. So they have to be non-identical and three bonds or less away. So here's another example where it actually does split. Now, do you remember how the H's on the left might not be the same, right? Let's say this is a methyl and this is an H. Okay, now let me actually show you this right here so I could blow it up. Now, and actually let's not use H down here. I don't want it to be a, a reading, so let's put this as a, a fluorine. Okay, now the first question is these H's are A, let's call this A, and these right here are B, and this one here is C. Now, why do I know it's A, B, and C? Because the H above on the left is not seeing the same thing across as the H below. I hope this is diastereotopic stuff. Remember how we recognize that? So there's no rotation now. So the H above, if it doesn't have the same environment, if it doesn't see the same thing as the H below, then they're different. So these are three different H's. We're going to have three readings on a chart. But now if I ask you about who's going to split who, the way...